Strange new chin complication. If you treat chins and jaw lines, this show is a must watch, particularly if you treat men, because this complication probably only applies to men, which is very rare in medical aesthetics. Recently, I shared details on a paper from Marina Landau who showed that you can cause alopecia with dermal filler in the hairline using the temple lifting technique. As a response to that, I had a patient and a clinician messaged me about a new complication that they had noticed. In this case, the patient describes having two mils of Juvederm Ultra 4 placed into their chin. This patient, I believe a man in his 30s, had the augmentation and then noticed a few weeks later something rather strange happening. A patch of his hair follicles started to fall out. He didn't have complete hair loss, but he noticed a distinct thinning of the hair directly underneath where the dermal filler was placed. I asked him about what his experience was, and he described an interesting sequence of experiences that led up to this event. The first thing was after the procedure, there was a degree of tenderness and aching and pain, which is potentially normal. Many patients will have something like this. The skin remained red for some time after the procedure for six to 10 days. And then there was a period where there was some itching involved as well. So the sense of irritation around the skin. So at the two week point, he noticed something which only someone who was so good at maintaining a beard would notice. Because if you notice, if I do say so myself, he has a rather immaculate beard, one I'm rather jealous of. And I think this is why it was very clear to him when some of the hair started to fall out. Because what, what you can see, although it's rather subtle, is in the after pictures, there is a patchiness directly over where most of the filler was placed. So I think what is happening here is that we have pressure caused by the filler, decreasing blood flow, not to the point of causing a necrotic wound to the skin, but just enough to decrease the blood flow to the hair follicle, causing some of those hair follicles to fall out and potentially die. So although this event happened four years ago, the patient still feels he has not fully recovered. And this is important for us to know as clinicians. Now, I'm aware this is only one case report and it may be a degree of subjectivity as well, but I think it might be worth considering telling all of our patients about this if they have a beard prior to a treatment, simply because it makes perfect sense that this could be an issue. But we also need to think about what we could do to decrease the chance of this happening to our patients. So why do I think this has happened at the chin and what could we do differently or with every patient to decrease the risk? The first thing is the chin in some patients you will notice is a rather tight structure. It does not always allow for a lot of space. So I noticed this the first time when I think I found a chin vascular occlusion that was actually just pressure, so pressure in the chin itself had compressed the capillaries and caused a small necrotic wound which recovered really well but it didn't look like a true arterial vascular occlusion which follows the path of an artery it looked more like a pressure sore and i think chins are different for this reason i think the labella the nose and the chin all have this particular ability to build up pressure underneath the skin in a way that other areas don't and that's one of the reasons why I'm not surprised to see a chin presenting along with hair loss. And now hair loss is also something that we know happens with pressure. It's one of the theories for even for baldness generally, that the scalp gets tighter as you get older. We've seen it now happen with dermal filler underneath the scalp, and it makes sense that that pressure could also apply in the chin. So what do we do as clinicians to decrease the chance of this happening? The first thing is one of the things I learned with non-surgical rhinoplasty is it's so important to gauge how much room there is in the skin before you start adding volume. So with a nose, for example, you pinch and see, does the skin move easily away from the periosteum? And I think something similar could be applied here with the periosteum and the skin around the chin. So you can just feel, does it feel like a potential space? Or are you gonna to have to increase pressure significantly to get the projection that you're after? Because what we're looking for ideally is plenty of loose tissue so that you can increase the projection without increasing the interstitial pressure, because that's the bit that causes decrease in blood flow that could cause the hair loss. The next thing is responding to those early signs. So if you're going to do a treatment like this with a patient with a beard, you may want to consider monitoring them a bit more closely in the first week. And if they have any signs of itching or swelling that persists longer than a few days, it may be reasonable to, to reverse that procedure. Of course, the step before that, which would be even better, is to do things more gradually. In fact, the clinician who sent me this case said due to his experience, he likes to build chins up slowly over time. And I think that is a very sensible way of doing it if you are worried about this. So small volumes increased over time until you get the result gives you a bit more leeway to respond to what you see on the day. And it gives 
potentially the chance for the blood supply to accommodate slightly before you get a negative sequelae. So in summary, this is actually exactly the same problem as Marina Landau demonstrated in her case report with the temple lifting technique. In that case report, she demonstrates that pressure, independent of a vascular occlusion, can cause hair to fall out. Now, what this case report also demonstrates is that obviously this could apply wherever there is hair and the chin is another part of the face where there's quite a tight connection with the skin and there isn't a lot of room. And so that's why it's happening in chins as well, potentially, although I only have one case report. I think it's much less likely to happen around this part of the face and the jawline here where there's just more loose tissue. That's why we haven't seen it there before. So take home message is just be aware with men and chins to consent them about it, to discuss it. And I wouldn't make too big a deal of it because although it's kind of strange, it is also mild. So there's a little bit of light patchy hair loss and you can probably reduce the chance of that by taking the steps discussed earlier in this video. If you'd like to learn much more about the anatomy, more than you've ever learned on any cadaver course and on any textbook that you've ever bought, make sure you join me on something I'm developing, especially for clinicians. It's the 3D anatomy experience. I don't think there's a better way to learn anatomy, so make sure you sign up. To find out more, just click the link in the description below.